Search for relevant literature, i.e. journals, articles or books on your topic. Create a list of key words and phrases for your topic, for example teenagers and parents and communication or teenagers or adolescents communication and or are known as Boolean operators and narrows your search because you must have all of the key words while or makes it broader because it can include any of the key words. Search for your keywords or phrases on scholarly database such as Google Scholar, PubMed or Science Direct. None of these databases are perfect. You will find some sources in one that you may not find in another. Step 2. Evaluate and select sources. Scan through the results, say the first hundred results, and tick or star the ones that seem relevant based on their title. All of these databases allow you to save the relevant articles. Then you need to log all of these results somewhere. I like to do this in Excel. I simply note the date, the author, the title. If you are using Google Scholar, it also shows you the number of citations. The number of citations is important because it shows how many times other scholars have cited the study. The higher the number of citations, the more important the study is in the field. However, remember new studies may have less citations simply because scholars have not found them yet. I have linked to the template I used down below. Now you have all the sources listed you need to find the actual documents. Some of these documents may be available free on then that's great, but often you will find that there is a fee to download them. If you are a student, you should now head to your school's database and search for these documents. If you are a practitioner, your organisation may be subscribing to a service that lets you access these documents. Step 3. File your sources. Once you have the documents, read the abstract to decide if the source is still relevant if it is, then save the document. I like to save my documents directly into my reference management software. I use Mendeley and I have linked to a great video that explains how to use it. Anyway, the important part is that you save the document. Once you have read the abstracts, decide on the articles that are most relevant. I like to highlight these in my Excel tool I showed you earlier and create a second sheet just for them. Step 4. Create your annotated bibliography. Now read the documents, then write a short summary about each source. You can do all this in your Excel document. Also make notes on the study design methods, theories used, the results and conclusions. Make note also of your own critical analysis of the publication. For example, did the study results differ from what others had been reporting? This is your annotated bibliography. Step 5. Decide on how you will organise your literature review. By now you know an awful lot about your topic and you can start to see themes and connections between sources. How do you want to organise your literature? Do you want to organise it chronologically, from older to more recent publications? Thematic, organised around key themes. Methodological, the types of methods used. And theoretical, the theories and models used. Step 6. Write the literature review using the information in your annotated bibliography, organised in the way that you have chosen. Make sure it has an introduction, main body and conclusion. That's it, you have written your literature review. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be informed when we make new videos like this.